All right, and this should probably be our last podcast for CNT 140, Chapter 14, talking about our closets. We're now going to jump into the 569C standard, this one right here. This is the one about your pathways and spaces. Uh, the, you know, the big piece we're looking at in this one is our closet specs. Now, just to kind of remind you, when we started our bid spec, we did the site survey and we picked out closet locations. Realistically, you know, if we could go back in time, realistically, we'd use all the knowledge that we're learning here in this chapter to help us with selecting our closet. We did a lot of assumptions when we picked out closets before. We assumed we could look for all this stuff or check all this stuff, but this is the stuff we'd be looking to have in place in our closets to select them, or um, if there was just a couple things that weren't in there, this would be part of the renovations to make it into a data closet. You know, if it didn't quite have enough power, we'd add it. If it didn't have enough cooling, we'd add it. Um, this is stuff that the, the the closet should have or should, you know, should be able to accommodate to be a data closet. All right. Uh, I'm doing this a little bit different from the book. I'm actually pulling it right out of the standard, and I'm just going to kind of touch on each of these areas. Uh, some of these kind of fall in the no-duh category, but we'll at least make some sense of it as we go. So, you know, some of you read, you're like, well, no-duh, but we'll, we'll go through and make some sense. One of the first things they mention in the standard, in here, here's the general um, closet, closet layout. This talks about temperature and humidity requirements. Um, Obviously, if equipment is too hot, it's going to fail and shut down, so we need to have cooling in there. If it's too humid, things are going to rust. If it's not humid enough, things are going to have lots of static electricity and short out. Um, so they specify ranges of. Your closet should have climate control for this, and if it's a main closet, maybe backup systems for when the main one fails. Um, that kind of idea. This stuff should be engineered in. The general architectural this is kind of in the next page. These are some general things that the closet should have. Again, this is stuff we would have been looking for as we walk through our closets. Um, they're talking about selection of the closet. You know, avoiding selections located, they're restricted by building components, and limit expansion. This closet, this closet should be accessible, usable. Uh, I shouldn't be displacing the CEO of the company to make his office a, a closet. That's no good. Um, this should not be restricted, you know, access that I, I can't get to it. Um, and I shouldn't be in situations where I'm sharing with other, you know, mechanical equipment in the building, that sort of thing, if I can help it. Um, and, you know, no room to expand if I need to. It, it's just saying this should be a good location for, um, for my data and allowing for expansion, those sorts of things if need be. Um, and in here, not sharing outside walls or other fixed building walls. There should be accessibility for delivering of large equipment. There, there should be room to get closet equipment in and out of there. Um, and one of the closets should be covered with plywood, three quarter inch plywood, two coats of fire return to paint. That way you can anchor things like 66 blocks and 110 blocks and stuff on the wall for your phone system if you need to. Or, or the um, ISP connection coming in, you know, if you need to terminate a box on the wall. Uh, they're saying here about the, the plywood, you know, the amount of plywood that should be on the wall, how it should be mounted, that sort of thing, above a finished floor. Yeah, we're not using carpet on the floor. We're using, you know, concrete that's sealed or tile floor kind of thing. Uh, they talk about the ceiling height. Um, again, there should be enough room in here to get my equipment rack in and uh, cable trays above it kind of deal. So they're specifying minimum uh, height of my room so I can put equipment racks in, I can put cable trays in, you know, get to things, that sort of stuff. Floor loading. Um, there should be thought to when you're putting your routers and switches and servers in your room, in your rack, will the floor support it? Um, some plans should be consulted, possibly even an engineer consulted to know if the floor loading of the building will handle all the equipment you're going to put in there. Again, one of the other reasons you do some rack drawings to figure out what's all going in there and how much is going to be in that rack on that footprint on the floor. Will the floor handle it? Uh, lighting shall be a minimum of, and they give ratings on lux, that's the amount of like lumens, if you will, um, so that you can see everything in the closet. You're not dealing with one single little solitary light bulb hanging down from the ceiling. The door should be a minimum of, and they give dimensions. Uh, again, I should be able to get equipment in and out of the door. This should not be a, a, a 20, 27 inch door. Um, I say that because, you know, most doors are 30, 36 inches, 
my house being an old farmhouse is about like 29 and a half, which is a challenge. I have to take doors off fridges to get in and out and often have to take, take parts off dryers and things or handles off just to get in, in and out. Um, that should not be. Your, your closet should be, and they give you some minimums here, that I can get equipment in and out of the room. Um, there should be no exterior windows, obviously for safety reasons. Somebody throws a brick through, climbs through the window, starts ripping off, you know, switches, routers, firewalls, um, uh, drives out of servers. You know, you have a, a, a server with RAID in, they could steal a hard drive or two and the server would never know it. You know, steal data, that sort of thing. There should be no exterior windows to this thing. We already mentioned temperature and humidity. They're referring to that table. Yes, uh, I should be having climate control in there, you know, pretty much year round. They talk about environmental controls such as UPS. They give a, a limit on, you know, how much UPS equipment should be in there. Uh, if I go over certain values, it should be located in another room, probably where your generator and other things are, um, that sort of thing. Fire protection, yep. Any sort of local fire codes that you have should be followed in your closet, you know, as far as what's located in there, what's not located in your closet. Again, that would be a local fire code thing, and that does change by, usually county, usually by county. Uh, telecom station should not be located below water level. Yep. Um, <laughs> we should we should be aware of floodplains and other stuff in there, flooding your closet. Maybe your main closet is actually on the second floor of the building. Seems kind of weird, but it might need to be in uh, areas where you have uh, floodplains that you're worried about. The next area of our... Our um, standard talks about racks and cabinets. Let's buzz through this guy real quick. They talk about a minimum amount of clearance in front of the rack. The idea is I should be able to get the door open and get switches and equipment in and out. Uh, you think about a rack mount server. It needs to be enough room to slide that thing out, work on it, slide it back, or vice versa. So they're talking about the minimum clearance in front um, and a minimum clearance behind, too. Cabinets should be selected and configured to provide adequate cooling. Yes, if you look at the cabinets we have in the room, they actually have ventilated tops, fronts, backs, you know, sides, that sort of thing to allow cooling through. Yeah, um, I need to allow heat out of here and let cool air in. They talk about the height of the rack. Again, this this should not be uh, should be high enough to get enough equipment in, but not too high that you can't reach the the top switcher patch panel up there. You know, a nine foot rack. Pfft, I can't reach that. I need a stepladder just to reach the patch panel to plug in. So they're talking about the height of this, and this should also kind of coincide with the height of the room that we talked about in the previous section. Um, cabinets should be have adequate depth to accommodate the planned equipment. Again, uh, a two-post rack is not going to accommodate a rack mount server. <laughs> Mr. Bell learned that the hard way. Um, first time I bought a rack mount server, I tried to put it in a rack, I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess I need a four-post rack. You know, it's one of those you don't think about it. Um, so your rack itself or cabinet, you know, if I'm putting servers in, needs to be deep enough, four-post, if you will, to be able to handle that, including power strips and other things um, for this. And they even talk about how much clearance there should be for cable management, plugging things in, that sort of thing. Same thing down here. Cabinet should have adjustable front and rear rails. It should provide 42 or more rack mount spaces. Um, and here they uh, talk for cable management here too. Yes, they're giving you dimensions and guidelines for all this. That way you don't have to guess. Um, and, and it's kind of thinking all this stuff out for you so you don't miss something. Power strips should be used with cabinets and racks containing active electronics. Yes, they have all kinds of rack mount power strips that mount horizontal, vertical. Uh, some of them even have little meters on, little gauges on that show you, um, you know, if you have a, if you have a 20 amp circuit um, in there, it can show you you're using 12 amps of current. So it's like, okay, you got some room. You're not going to blow a break or anything like that. Uh, vertical cable management should be used. Yes, um, they're saying at least bare minimum vertical cable management in your racks or your cabinets. Some other architectural environmental. I think this is on the next page down here. Uh, locate the display room as close as possible to the center of the area being served. Yeah, we mentioned that before. Um, you know, as much close to the center of the floor that you're dealing with. That'll get you maximum coverage of the floor. If multiple display rooms are on the same floor, they should be interconnected with, and they talk about the certain uh, conduit so that I can run backbones and other stuff between my closets. Should be a minimum of one per floor. Yes, we've mentioned that already. There should be at least one closet per floor in my building. Uh, there should be a minimum of two dedicated 120 volt AC non switched AC duplex receptacles provided on each 20 amp dedicated branch circuit. They're saying, look, um, 
this electrical circuit going to the closet should not be shared with anything else, any other rooms or offices. Uh, think about, you know, I'll pick on somebody in an office complex firing up the microwave uh, to heat up their lunch or popcorn and it blows the breaker that your routers and switches are connected to. Well, that's just annoying. So they're saying here there should be dedicated circuits to this closet with receptacles to handle that. And they're saying a minimum of two. It's probably going to be more, but a minimum of two. And again, if you're picking out a closet and there's only you know one circuit in there, it's like, well, we have to renovate and add some more elect electrical circuits to this room before it can be a data closet. That needs to be part of the uh, renovations to make this a closet. They talk about the size of the closet. Oh, yeah, this is a big, long thing. What it boils down to is they're saying, look, your closet should be a minimum of 10 by 10. The more connections and users you're connecting up, the larger the closet needs to be. And they actually have a little chart here. Let me zoom in on this guy. That gives you a ballpark of if I'm serving up to 200 outlets, I can get by with, um, you know, a 3 by 5 excuse me, a 10 by 15, 10 by 15 closet. If I'm dealing with um, 200 to 800 outlets, I should have a 20 by 20 closet and so forth. These are giving you guidelines because they know, you know, with X amount of drops, you're probably going to need two distribution racks, you know, four posts, that sort of thing. They're, they know it's going to consume more room, so you should have more room in your closet to accommodate that. Um, that's what this all boils down to. It kind of boils down to this little chart giving you a guideline on how big your closet should be. And actually, oh, I put that right in there for you. So there is kind of a quick overview of the 569 standard and what our closet should have, or for that matter, should not have. Um, but again, this is all stuff that realistically would have been in our brain as we walked through our building and selected closets or went through the closet and kind of did a mental checklist of, yep, got it, got it, got it. Ooh, it doesn't have these two things. These will need to be part of the uh, install that we're doing. We're going to put more electrical circuits in. We're going to put more lights in. Sorry, that's just what's necessary to make this the data closet for your building. So there's a uh, quick overview of Chapter 14 as well as our 569 standard describing our data closets.